Good afternoon, YouTubers. Welcome to Secret London with me, Mark Monroe. And today we're going to start off with a little quiz. Now, I want you to see if you can name the actor and the film. Okay, concentrate. Bear with, getting into character. Don't throw those bloody spears at me. Did you get it? The actor was Michael Caine and the film was the iconic war film, Zulu. Now, this film depicted the Battle of Rourke's Drift, the defense of a mission station in South Africa, Natal, on January the 22nd, 1879, by only 150 British colonial soldiers. They fought off the attack of over 4,000 Zulu warriors. Now, in the film, Michael Caine played Lieutenant Gonville Bromhead, and the actual role catapulted his career into silver screen stardom. But in real life, one of those heroes came from Chiswick. And believe it or not, he was a London cabbie, just like me. And today, we're gonna to find out all about him. First of all, getting to Chiswick, West London, it's fairly simple, it's served by most of the major bus routes going into West London, but my advice, head for Turnham Green Station. Then turn left, walk up to the end of Turnham Green Terrace, take another left, walk for two minutes, and then on your right, you'll see Cranbrook Road, and you're looking for number 62. And on arriving at number 62, you're gonna see an English heritage blue plaque. And the name on that plaque is Frederick Hitch. He was born in 1856 and died in 1913 here in Chiswick. And that's whose today's story is all about. So who was Frederick Hitch? Well, he was actually born in Southgate on Chaseside in 1856. Then at the age of 20, he enlisted with the 24th Regiment Foot. And before long, because the British Empire's tentacles were still stretching all over the globe, he was sailing south to South Africa and war with the Zulus. On the 22nd and 23rd of January, 1879, Private Hitch was stationed at Rourke's Drift Medical Post when word came in that a Zulu assault was on its way. During the assault, Private Hitch kept up vital communications between the defences and the hospital. Now, our hero Hitch was involved in a holding position, drawing fire from a nearby hillside. But then, catastrophe. He took a severe wound to the shoulder and was rushed into the hospital. After being patched up by Surgeon Reynolds, he went right back out into the fray and started to help extricating patients from the hospital. And even though he couldn't fire or hold a gun, he still ferried ammunition to the soldiers on the front line. Unfortunately, because of the severity of his wounds, he was discharged and sent back to England, where he spent three to four months at the Netley Military Hospital. But that's not where the story ends, because, because of that man's bravery and endeavor on the battlefield, Hitch, was awarded the Victoria Cross, the most prestigious award any military man can receive in the British Army. After leaving hospital, uh, he found it difficult to get work. He was moving from job to job and unable to do manual work because of the shattered shoulder bone he had. And life was pretty difficult for old Hitch. Uh, just a government pension of 10 pounds a year was a struggle for him. Eventually, R. Hitch did find work at the Imperial Institute in South Kensington. But then, in 1901, more disaster. Hitch fell off a ladder. And the next day, when he awoke in hospital, his Victoria Cross, which he wore every day on his lapel, had been stolen. 
Hitch was forced to buy a new Victoria Cross out of his own savings. Life was not going well for Hitch. At the same time, he was being accused of selling the old Victoria Cross to raise funds, but that has never been proven. He still had eight surviving children. Then all of a sudden, things got a bit better for him. He became a London horse-drawn taxi driver. He had his own two horses, and then after that, a motorized taxi and drove for the London Taxi Company. So he was comfortable in his new career and spent the rest of his life doing this job. Sadly, this is where Hitch's story ends. In 1913, Hitch was chatting with his neighbor, and then suddenly died. People think of a heart attack. And this is where he's buried, in St. Nicholas's churchyard, down by Chiswick Mound. It's a beautiful, peaceful, pretty church. And we're going to visit his memorial stone now. St. Nicholas's church is rather a small, quaint church. However, the cemetery is big. So, once you're at the back of the church, head for the Iron Arch. Walk through that Iron Arch, go straight down the path on the right, get to the end, turn left, and then do another right, and about 200 yards down that path, on your left, is Frederick Hitch's memorial. Now Hitch was buried here with full military honours. And I'm just coming up to the memorial now. It's a lot bigger than I thought it would be. And apparently hundreds of London taxi drivers attended this service to commemorate his heroic achievements. And like I said, this is where the journey ends. It's not so much of a gravestone, it really is a memorial. I love the helmet on top, it symbolizes that battle that Rourke's Drift so well. And it says, to the memory of Frederick Hitch, VC, born 29th November 1856, died 6th of Jan 1913, was erected by voluntary subscription to commemorate his heroic action at Rourke's Drift on the 22nd of January, 1879. Just incredible. So, from one taxi driver here to another London taxi driver, I just want to say, thanks Hitch. Thanks for your service to Queen and Country. And you'll never be forgotten. If you enjoyed today's episode, smash that thumbs up button, leave any comments down below, the good, the bad, and the ugly, I read them all. And if you really enjoyed it, why not subscribe? So until next time, stay tuned for another episode of Secret London with me, Mark Monroe.